Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about John Wick, uh, tabletop role-playing games on uh, J uh, John Wick from, he's a huge tabletop role-playing game designer on Genesis, the book of Genesis from the Holy Bible, the sacred text of, um, specifically of um, evangelical Christians and Jewish people. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about, let's talk this through. All right, who, who's John Wick? Well, John Wick is a very, very, very famous tabletop role-playing game designer. He's probably one of the biggest and the best in the entire industry. Uh, he's a little older now. He's probably on the, you know near the end. He's definitely at the end of his career, uh, not really at the beginning or even in the middle. Um, but what did he do in tabletop role-playing games? He did some really big stuff. He did 7C, the first edition, well-loved. It was kind of a big deal. Second edition, that's the whole, that that's probably his greatest achievement. Second edition... Se uh, 7C was like a huge cash cow. It was the first. It was one of the first. One of the first tabletop role playing games to bust a million dollars on, um, on Kickstarter. It made two. I th I'm pretty sure. Did it make two million? I think it made two million. Like, no, no, no. I'm, I think it was the first to break a million. And then Mercer came along. Um, and then, um, Matt Colville came along and did a project that was over two million. So, but Wick was one of the, the founding TTPRG um, creators who said, you can make a million plus on Kickstarter, right? And that was just for 7th edition, 2nd edition, for 7th C, 2nd edition. And really, it, it, it made a ton of money. People bought it, but it didn't really go anywhere, um, which, and that's okay. It was, it was a huge success. And, you know, and I'm always, I always love this analogy Who's bushwhacking? Who's whacking, whacking the way, you know, whacking their way through the jungle with their own machete, not following a path? And so John Wick was bushwhacking when he did this, and it's a big deal, right? Like it's a really big deal. So um, John Wick is a very, uh, he's a very famous tabletop role playing game designer. Uh, he did Seven C. He did um, Legends of the Five Rings. Uh, there was a card game, and there was a Role-playing game with over five editions, right? And uh, and John Wick was all over it. He, he started that whole ball of wax, and that, that's huge, right? So he's had two major successes. Now, there is a little bit of a sad note. Um, so he had 7C. He had um, Legends of the Five Rings. But then he did this thing called House of the Blooded, and it was his own, you know, it was another one of his own creations, and it went nowhere. I actually read it. It's a fantastic tabletop role-playing game, but um, unfortunately, John Wick is very, very, very much part of this new trend that we have. It's a serious problem in tabletop role-playing game designer, where designers start creating. They start creating their games and playing their games with other designers. It's one of the worst problems in all of tabletop role-playing games is designers who jump in and they're just designing games with other designers they know and which is great for your tabletop experience, right? And you, you get it all tested and everybody's like, oh, that's great. And then because everybody else doesn't have a bunch of ta bunch of also tabletop role-playing game designers, you know, as their players, it fails. So I think that's why House of the Blood had failed, personally. Uh, major problem, major problem. It's not just his problem. It's a huge problem, man. Like, woo, <laughs> okay. So, okay, so that's John Wick. Um, and yeah, sorry, Seven C, Legends of the Five Rings, House of the Blood. Okay, so what? What are we talking about today? He's reading Genesis. He's reading the Book of Genesis. What? <laughs> like it's crazy, right? So now, first of all, what is this, what is Genesis? This is from the Holy Bible. This is sacred text for Jews, Evangelical Christians, and Christians. Okay. Now, why on earth is he, why on earth is he doing this? Well, it's fascinating. He said flat out he thinks it's bad game design. He thinks that the Bible is bad game design. So he's looking at life from the perspective of it being a game and God as having written the rules for it, right? And what he said is that the problem with the rules is it's all about obedience. God rewards uh, obedience and God punishes disobedience. So he's saying, you know, and, and John Wick is really into this in tabletop role-playing games, because he is saying, hey, um, you know, basically reward players for what you want them to do and don't reward them for what you don't want them to do. 
But when he reads the book, right, it's it's really fascinating. He says a lot of interesting things. So he's coming at it from a game design, and he literally calls it a game designer reads Genesis, and he is commenting on it throughout, right? And he's commenting on it from a game designer's perspective. Quite interesting, quite interesting. Uh, by the way, I should say my bias now. I'm an evangelical Christian, right? So let's let's go back up. So you know, who cares about Genesis, right? Jews, evangelical Christians, and Christians. Right now, Jews, as this is my understanding of, of who and what Jews are, they're the Jewish people, um, and they, you know, they live in Israel and uh, and all over the world, and of course, they've had a, a, a very you know widely, um, they have a wide history across the earth. They have a, it's called diaspora. They've been spread throughout the earth, and uh, they do have a home in Israel, and um, and okay, let's go to that second part, evangelical Christian. I'm an evangelical Christian, right? But I'm also a game designer, just like John Wick. My game is called Freight Chain Iron. You can find it on Itch.io, and you can find it on, um, uh, and you can find it also on Drive Through RPG. Uh, and it's free. You can get it for free, all right? Because you know, I got, I got a, I got a main type gig, so I, I'm able to give that to the world. Uh, you know, so I do. But we're both tabletop role playing game designers. And I've read Genesis uh, many times. Actually, not many. Exactly eleven. I've read, uh, you know, I read the Bible cover to cover eleven times. Um, actually, I've read it like probably seven. And then I think I threw some audio. Over, you know, I count when I listen to an audio version. But I've been through the Bible cover to cover at least eleven times, and some sections more than that. So, um, and and that's just because I read it every single day of my life because I'm an evangelical Christian and have been since I was fifteen years old. Right. So, so this this whole topic just absolutely fascinated me. I was just, I thought this was incredible. So you have Jews, you have evangelical Christians, and then you have Christians, right? So what's the difference between an evangelical Christian and a Christian? I'll give it to you real quick. Uh, Christians mean it. <laughs> like That's the best way to say it. So basically, um, here's a good example, right? So if you asked somebody, uh, if you asked two people uh, who were healers, right, and one's a traditional healer, and one is a, as Americans would 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 consider doctors, or somebody was like a homeopathic healer, you know, like so basically, or not even, you know what? Let's let's do it this way. Let's if you have a cold, right, and you ask two people, and they would, and one would say, well, you go, you get diagnosed, you get some antibiotics, and you take those antibiotics, and that'll cure, cure your cold, right? And then the other person is like, "Well, you put some leeches on somebody, they suck out that bad cold blood, and then um, and then they're good to go, right?" The leeches person, right? If they said, "Hey, we talked to this other person, and they said that you have to go and get a diagnostic, and um, you know, and then get antibiotics. That's how you cure a cold, right?" Um, and so, <laughs> right? So, like a traditional approach, right? Um, then, oh, I'm, I'm worried now that you might not be able to cure a cold with antibiotics. <laughs> so, so I'm talking from a perspective of not knowing a lot about medicine, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. I think you understand my point. All right. So, so basically, the one, you know, the per, the the person who was like, yeah, antibiotics are needed to cure this particular thing, right? And they say, well, we we talked to this other person. They said you can cure it with leeches. Now the leeches person will say, "Oh, yeah, that's fine. You could take antibiotics, you, or you could use leeches. Whatever you want. You could do it any way you want it, right?" But the but the the antibiotics person will be like, "No, no, 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 no. You can't be just putting leeches on yourself, man. You know, there's a right way, there's a wrong way." That's evangelical Christians, and that's Christians, right? Evangelical Christians are like, you read the Bible, you do everything you can to understand it, and you follow it, right? And if you don't like what it says, Tough nuggets. That's what it says. You can't just believe whatever you want, right? Like, so that's the difference. Christians are just people who are like, oh, I'm a Christian, but whatever you think is fine too, right? That's the difference, right? That that's the primary difference, right? So, so he is on some important ground for Jews, evangelical Christians, and Christians, right? And of course, I was just man, I was just eating this up. I was like, ooh, I'm I'm really interested in this, right? Because this is a game designer saying, I'm going to come and take a look at the Bible from the perspective of bad game, a, a perspective of game design, and I'm going to say that God was a bad game designer. I'm like, whoa, wow, okay. So there's so much here. All right, so let's let's get there. All right. So we talked about why. Uh, let's talk about when. This is happening now. Like he's covering this right now. He's reading through it right now. So the reason why I'm talking about it right now, which is exciting. Okay. Uh, where? On his gaming YouTube channel, right? 
and not on a side channel, like right on his gaming channel where he talks about D and D, where he makes character, uh, where he makes tabletop role playing game characters, right on his gaming channel, right, like his tabletop role playing game channel. Very, very fascinating. I'm, I'm just fascinated by this. How is he doing it? Disrespectfully. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I thought was really, really, he, he, uh, the first thing he says is, I'm going to read Genesis, and I'm not going to mock it. Immediately, he launches into no less than a dozen jokes. He absolutely is mocking Genesis, right? And it's very clear, too, that he, uh, he doesn't believe, he doesn't believe, he believes that this is a story, and that, that you could just take it or leave it the way you would die hard. Right? It's just a story, right? And he's very disrespectful to it, in my opinion, from the perspective of Jews, Christ, evangelical Christians. Not cr even uh, to Jews. I think there'd be a lot of Jews and a lot of evangelical Christians who would think that what he was doing was disrespectful, right? Christians wouldn't. They're like, whatever you believe is fine. I believe this. You believe whatever you believe. It's all good. Whatever. You know, like Christians, right? Just like. Eh, Christianish, Christiany, you know that kind of thing, All right? So he's not a, he's not offending them, which is and and actually I'm actually not offended, but and the only reason why is I think he's ignorant of this subject, uh, and not because he hasn't read it or not because he's not smart, but we're, we'll get there. Why I feel like he has some ignorance in the mix, and we'll get there, but. I do think he intended not to mock this sacred text, but he's absolutely mocking this sacred text. There's times where he's like, well, God's just, an, you know, uh, God's kind of stupid or God's jerking these people around or like, you know, he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't use any of the terms that Jews or evangelical Christians would use for God, like sovereign, right? Holy, set apart. These are all, you know, terms that are connected to him that John Wick never uses. And right, because he doesn't he doesn't think of it that way, right? He's thinking of, he thinks of God like you know John McClain in, in Dyer. It's just a story, it's just a character. Whatever, right? It's just kind of interesting, but I'm very interested in this whole thing, right? So, but the other thing that this reminded me of is just tabletop role is when you get into something, and I here's the thing. He said he says, I'm not gonna mock this, right? Because he knows, he knows when non-Christians talk about the Holy Bible, often there's a lot of mockery and a lot of like, hmm, how could somebody believe this, right? And so I think he wanted to avoid that, but he couldn't. Why couldn't he? This is really fascinating to me. So one of the reasons why is we, we if you want to talk about, uh, you know, tabletop role-playing game design, which is what he's talking about this in the context of, this is a huge problem. It's when you can't even understand the subject to the point where you could get there, right? A perfect example of this is rules like games, right? I have a book on my shelf. It's called Shadowrun Anarchy. It is 220 pages long. It was intended to be the light version of Shadowrun, right? Now, a light game, tabletop role-playing games have light versions, right? Fate Core is 300, is 300 pages. Fate Accelerated is 50 pages. It's actually accelerated, and it's light, and it runs fast. Shadowrun Anarchy is not a light game. It's a heavy game made by people who don't even understand what the word light means, right? And that's what we have here, right? Uh, John Wick is coming at this from a game designer's perspective and think he's not going to mock it, but the fact is that he doesn't think God is sovereign, doesn't think God is holy, doesn't think God is set apart. It makes the things he say he is absolutely mocking the text. He doesn't mean to. He doesn't even know he's doing it but he's absolutely doing it, right? And the reason why is he, he doesn't even understand, there, and it's not his fault, right? When you come at the Bible, there's so much freight. The word baptism, people have written 100 books on one word, right? That word, that word is freighted, right? And so he's given a good attempt, but he's not anywhere close to fully, to, he's not anywhere close to understanding Genesis, let alone the Bible, right? Not from a, theological perspective and certainly not from a game design perspective in my opinion all right so i got a few few notes on this here we go <laughs> all right um why is i want to retouch why why is wick doing this really interesting to me john wick is doing this because he's in my opinion because he's nearer his end state than his start state and it's time for some reflection right he's reading the big book you know the good book the big book because he, be, he, you know, because if there is a judgment day, 
Oh, maybe it'd be time to take a look, right? Get my get my full understanding now. Second, he's a dungeon master, right? John Wick, he wrote his own tabletop world names because he played Dungeons and Dragons and was like, I want to make my own game, right? So he's a dungeon master. Uh, if you're not aware, a ton of dungeon masters have a god complex. And boy, oh boy, does John Wick have a god complex. He's like, I'm going to take a look at a sacred text that's been around for 2,000 years and say it's bad game design. You're like, oh, man, you got an ego on there, buddy. Uh, pot, here's the kettle. I got, I got an ego, too, I'll admit it. But this guy's got one, too. Holy cows, right? <laughs> um, now, here's the thing. Uh... I, I'm actually fully in support of this project he's doing because I think it's absolutely fascinating from an evangelical Christian perspective to look at a non-evangelical Christian going into a Genesis and trying to understand it. Um, that's, that's fascinating to me, right? He voices a lot of concerns. He's like, oh, God doesn't like people who disobey him. Hmm, that's a, that's a pretty bad uh, character flaw in my opinion, right? And uh, I have had the same, I, everything John Wick believes, I believe when I, 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 every single thing he believes now that he knows better than God. And when he looks at the Bible, he's like, oh, I don't know. This doesn't look uh, very good or put together. It just looks like a slapped together story, right? And he's in judgment. He's in judgment of the word, right? I had every concern he has today, and he's probably 55 or 60, when I was 15 years old. And my pastor said to me, he said, Scott, these are all great concerns, right? My concern, I said to him, I'm like, I'm not going to worship a dude that's going to make half the people in the world uh, be apart from him in a hot place for eternity. I'm not going to do that. And he's like, it's going to be a lot more than half, Scott. <laughs> but, but check this. You are sitting in judgment of God's word. You're like, eh, I don't think this is uh, true. I think it's a, a slap together story. It's not good. But someday... You will sit before the judgment throne, and God is going to judge your life. And he's going to say, oh, hey, if you're going to get with me, you have to be perfect. Are you perfect? Oh, you weren't perfect? Oh, I see quite a few sins here, Scott. I'm judging your life. You will now be separated from me for eternity in the hot place. Right? H-E double hockey sticks. And I was like, well, what can I do to not have that happen, Pastor? He says, you could be considered you could be considered righteous fully worthy of staying with God being holy by accepting his son Jesus Christ who died for your salvation and if you do that you'll be in heaven forever but if you don't you'll be separated that's it so you can do all you want you can you can look at this book and laugh at it and judge it all you want and your judgment will be chaff in the wind one second after you after you pass from this life but God's judgment is eternal and matters, and it won't dissipate. And you will be in the hot place for all eternity without the salvation of his son. That's the part John Wick is missing. That's the part he doesn't get. Because his judgment won't last, but God's judgment will. I'm, I'm putting this here. John, I hope you see this video. Please, please, please understand your judgment will be chaff in the wind. God's judgment on you will not. That's the important part to understand, right? And I loved your perspectives on the book from a TTBRB perspective, but I'm here to tell you, brother, like we're just two humans on this earth. We're trying to love one another, love other people and be good to one another. And there's something real here. The Bible is not bad game design. It's your ticket to eternity or a big blocker if you continue to judge that word the way you are. Please, John Wick, take a look at this and, and kind of move past where you're at. Uh, the other thing is he has knowledge but not wisdom. The, the reason why he doesn't understand God, he's, he looks at God and he goes, mm, I don't like the way God deals with the world. It's not good, right? Is he doesn't understand. Why would God structure the world this way? Because he's sovereign. He's holy. He's set apart. He makes the jet, He makes the jars and he can smash them. He makes the jars and he can put enamel on them and make them beautiful. That's the part that we don't get, right? Like that, and that's the part he's not getting is that he's he's a create he is created, and he's looking at the creator and saying you're not good enough. Jars don't get to tell the creator that that, he, that the creator isn't good enough. It's just not the way it works. Um, I do want to thank John Wick one last time for this video. It was an amazing his 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 readings of Genesis. They are really amazing. 
because they fully embody the tabletop role, the tabletop role playing games, Holy Grail, Dungeons and Dragons, three pillars, exploration, interaction, and combat. He is exploring holy texts, sacred texts. That's awesome. He is interacting right now and reading these openly and inviting comment on his commentary on, on Genesis. That's interaction. Combat. He's combating his own ignorance. I love that. Fantastic. Check it out. Check out John Wick's reading of Genesis. And if you're like him, if you're judging the word, remember, your judgment will be chaffing the wind. It'll blow away. God's judgment on you will not. It will stick. That's all I needed to hear to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I invite you to do the same. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I know you died on the cross for me. Uh, and, you know, and to be in my place so that when I am judged, your acts will count as my righteousness. And I believe you died on the cross to save me. Please save me from being apart from God for eternity. And if you believe that and you say it in your heart, you're a Christian just like me. And even you're a Christian, you're an evangelical Christian just like me because you'll be bound by the word just like I am. Right? That's all it takes. I love John Wick's uh, videos. I'm so happy he did them. Uh, thank you for letting me share these thoughts with you. Please consider liking and subscribing. I have a wonderful millennium.